welcome back, me, you. I'm gonna make another dal, which will be the third dal so far on the channel. It's a red lentil, a split red lentil dal, and the difference with this one is one, it's a little bit harder flavor, so not as soft, um, and two, it's a quicker cook with no soaking time. So I feel like maybe this is a good one for, um, you know, those of us who sometimes don't have forethought, which is me included in that as well sometimes. So um, we're gonna start with our split red lentils. And you can see how soft they are. Because they're so soft, we're actually not gonna soak them all. We're just gonna give them a good rinse and a drain. So this is a cup and a third of red lentils. If you'd like to learn more about lentils, you can look on my YouTube channel. I have a couple of different tutorials and I'll put the links to those in the description for this one. So you can see just in this little bit of soaking that they're beginning to swell just a fraction. And when it comes to rinsing and draining lentils, essentially what we're trying to do is make sure they're clean for one, but also remove a little bit of the starch from the outside. I think that's enough. Now what we do, this is a really straightforward cook, is um, I need a pot. Oh, I've got my daggy socks on, hang on. <laughs> Better take those off. Not much of the spice mistress in bed socks. <laughs> Kind of ruins the fantasy. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to pop this in here, and then, as always with uh, dal, when we're making, is um, the base spice, so salt and turmeric, goes in at this point when we're cooking the lentil. Salt particularly with lentils, because lentils absorb a lot of flavour, salt in the base is quite important. So it's a little bit to taste, but for one and a third cups of split red lentils, I'm going to put one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then a half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. And then this needs five cups of water, which is actually quite a lot. I'm going to put four in because I feel like five's too much. Um, and then this goes on the stove to heat. So it goes on a high heat and we want it to bring it to the boil. And then once it's at a boil, we'll turn it down. And it's going to take around 25 minutes, um, which isn't too bad. Okay, we need to stir through. You can see that as it comes to a boil, what happens is you get all this scum on the surface. And so, we use this as an opportunity to remove that. Now the end result of this dal is actually quite liquid and the chief spice profile is ajwan. So it's quite a particular spice, it's a digestive spice. It's very strong eucalyptus soap kerosene aroma, which doesn't sound delicious, but essentially what it does is impart this very unique, um, pungent mint, earthy character to a dish. Uh, and then we're mixing that with a little bit of dried and fresh chili. So it's it's very shadowed flavor. Normally with our family dal, it's very soft and um, warm and inviting. And this is a little more ethnic, if I can put it that way. It's a little harder, but one of my favorite kind of flavor profiles. So once the scum's off, what we're gonna do is just give it a little stir. And you can see, how that's already softening. It happens so quickly with this dal, which is why we don't need to soak. Um, just to turn it down to a simmer, a little bit less than that. You want the, the roll of the bubble to be quite gentle. And I'm kind of regretting not putting the extra cup of water in. So I'm gonna add half a cup. And the end result of this should be a little sambar-like. I'm just gonna pop 
pop another half a cup in there at least. Oh my god, that's delicious. That's essentially cooked. And to be honest, that was nowhere near 25 minutes. What's left now is um, the tatka, so the tempered spice that's going to go on the top. And it's really, really simple. So I'm actually just going to bring it across here and, and do it from the stove. Just a little bit of ghee. Like, that's probably two teaspoons. And the reason for the small amount of ghee is that ghee is very sweet. And this dal is actually um, a dal that is more pungent and has more um, kind of darker flavour. So I, I don't want the ghee to sweeten it too much. In fact, you could just use a plain vegetable oil, ajwansi. But I do like the ghee as a contribution. Um, these chilies I'm going to pop in. So just a dried red chilli. And then a little bit of fresh green chilli that I'm not going to de-seed because these ones aren't that hot and I do want to retain a little bit of heat. And what I can smell is the ghee. It's so sweet ghee, it's so buttery. How pretty is that? I can smell the ajwan now coming through, so the chilli's drawing out the pungent quality in the ajwan seed. But with tempering spice, you're just waiting for the sing. So the sing being the noise and um, the aroma. Place this on the heat. Oh. Look at that. And that's it. There's so much beauty in food. So simple, no soaking, no forethought. If you don't have ajwan seed, substitute for cumin seed or even caraway. Um, or a mix of both cumin and caraway, a 50-50 equal part mix, will get you somewhere closer to that ajwan seed quality. And you want the spice, the seeds to be whole because they give a little bit of crunch and they bring a, a fuller aromatic profile to the dish. Oh, that's so delicious. <clears throat> it's nutty and minty, which I know sounds terrible, but I promise you it's not. Um, Ajwan has a very um, fresh feel in the mouth and I guess that's what I'm referring to. It's not so much the taste of mint as the um, sensation of freshness. Um, and with dal, that's beautiful because uh, dals can be quite heavy and so this fresh quality of the Ajwan just lightens the whole feeling of the dish. The chili is very mild because it's going through the volume of the lentil. So it's just this really pleasing warmth. The salt's perfect. And the ghee is just a touch of sweetness. I like a bowl of that with a puri or a chapati, a little bit of roti bread, just lunchtime heaven. <laughs>